So here's a little overview of um, various or two compact filters. So we've got on the left there, you've got the Vortex 300. And um, on the right there, you've got the Fernox TF1, the Vortex is by Sentinel. And quite interesting how they work actually, because um, the Vortex on the left there is clearly fitted to the return. So just before it goes in the boiler and the compact TF1 it's fitted to the flow, which I know everyone's going to say, oh, you shouldn't do this, that, the other. But I've done this for as a matter of experiment, out of curiosity. Um, yes, it was a complete waste of time. And yes, I'm sure there's loads of plumbers out there going to send me all kinds of silly comments, whatever it is. But this is what it's for. It's purely for, let's see if it catches anything. And the answer is, yes, it does. The TF1 still catches lots of large particles up to perhaps five, six mil, something like that, rod-like particles, um, a bit like sawn off bits of pencil perhaps. Um, the Sentinel Vortex 300 catches lots of smaller particles, but it did seem to miss an awful lot of stuff that was then picked up in the TF1. Now, I've bolted to it or taped to it these enormous great neodymium magnets, and those slabs are really strong, much, much stronger than the one that's in there. Um, so strong in fact I got two of them within about two inches and took the top of my finger off that's how bad they are but they do they improve the performance of that sentinel device absolutely massively I mean they probably triple the output of it as uh, the centrifugal spore force spins the particles around the outside of the container before it returns to the boiler now it did I did wonder whether the TF1 is catching larger particles because it's possible that the boiler is um, almost manufacturing those larger particles by taking some of the small debris in the pipes to uh, baking it together. And so it's congratulating into slightly larger pieces, but I wouldn't be 100% sure on that. <clears throat> so I don't know which one I would go for if I was you. It depends on probably your boiler, but they both work pretty well. But the, the compact, certainly the TF1, I would say catches more. And I was a bit concerned that the Vortex 300 allowed so many particles to flow through it. But like I said, I, unless someone says to the contrary, I'm not 100% convinced the boiler doesn't manufacture or bake those smaller pieces into larger bits, which then get picked up by the compact, I'm not sure. But in theory, the Vortex should catch almost everything. And the idea is, of course, that it stops any of that going in the boiler, which it clearly doesn't. Now, uh, chemicals. So I tried all three of these, the one I put them all in test pots. This is typical of the kind of sludge, it's now much finer. And that's typical of the sludge you get out of the, um, the Vortex 300. It seems to catch quite a lot of small stuff like that, although I missed the larger things. And then the compact TF1 seems to catch large particles like this. Now that in there is Sentinel X800 liquid. So I tried Fernox DS40, put that into a test pot, left it, warmed it up, left it for a day. Didn't really do bugger all to be honest with you. I think it's probably more of a lime scale descale and their thing, but it didn't seem to do a lot at all. Um, followed by uh, the FX2 by Cameco. Now that was um, that was quite effective initially, but it seemed to leave awful lot of large chunks in the pipes and stuff when I flushed it. Every time I put that in there, came back out, there wasn't a lot of small debris around. There was an awful lot of large pieces. And when you put them all in the pots, the only one that in neat form would dissolve the larger particles, um, you know, the four or five mil pieces as it's shown in here, without a doubt was the Sentinel X800. The rest of them, I don't think will ever clear the pipes out personally. That's been sat in there a day and this was the whole of that bottom was covered with large particles. And now you can see it's dissolved almost all of them. Uh, it goes in as a milky colour. So if it was me, I would go for the Sentinel X800 every time. Okay, so I've also got some Sentinel X400 here, which I'm not sure quite what difference is between X400 and X800, but um, I'm assuming it's probably slower acting. As it says, you can leave it in the longer. It says for stubborn debris, but I think that basically means you can leave it in the longer. Probably because it's less acidic, I would guess. Um, and in case you're wondering, on the DS40 tub where I had FX2 written on it, by the way, of course, that had FX2 in it. After I'd used the DS40, I just had a big drum of FX2, which I poured in it, and that's all. So the other thing worth mentioning, actually, 
is on this um, the Vortex 300 I noticed that really buggers up the power flush so when you connect the power flush to it um, because there's no air valve or air bleed valve in the top you tend to get trapped air at the top there and that acts as a a kind of spring if you like in the in the fluid to allow compression in the pipe and so when you switch on the power flush it definitely um, definitely reduces its performance and I can tell you that because when you actually um, put the power flush to flow the correct way so the normal way the boiler won't actually run with the power flush connected if it goes through that vortex because of that it keeps obviously saying there's not enough flow so it's definitely affecting that if you go if you bypass it it works absolutely fine Okay, so that's what came out of the Vortex 300 after about uh, maybe three or four hours running. And then if you look down in here, you can probably just to make out some larger particles stuck on the sides from the bigger magnets. But again, I cleaned this out. This is only like, literally after a, a few hours. But from the actual main magnet provided with the, um, the Vortex 300, which is here, that's all you got out of it. Didn't really stop a lot, so we're going to have a look in the Sentinel in a minute. Uh, you notice as well, there's only, on both this one and the, um, the Fernox CF, you'll see that there's just three magnets. Now these magnets are rubbish. I know they go on about them being 9,000 Gauss and all that kind of stuff. Well, they may be actually, but, there's a big but, is that because of the magnetic side, the north and south pole, I'm trying to get too close, is actually only where these bars are. So basically the north and south vertically, rather than being polo magnets with the north and south on the outside, which you can get, but they're a lot more expensive. So they've gone for this cheaper option. Now this one is from the uh, Fernox, sorry, from the Vortex 300. And then this one is out of the uh, CF1. You can see they're actually pretty much the same. The CF1 has got a better spread. So the only magnetic attraction occurs at these thinner ones on the north and south. You can see it pulling, but when you go this side, it really doesn't do a lot. So you've only actually got these very narrow bands of magnetic um, attraction. <clears throat> and of course with magnetism, the larger the particle, the, um, the more effect it has on it. So anything small, they need to be really, really strong. Hence why they don't really work that well. Okay, so I've just emptied out the compact TF1 uh, by Fernox, and with no surprise, there's a lot more larger debris. Now, this is obviously on the flow, so the, all that rubbish there has actually been through the boiler and missed by the Vortex 300, even with uh, my giant magnet attachments. So conclude what you like from that but that stuff should have been captured by the vortex now like I said before is it possible it's being manufactured with uh, slower flow I'm not sure if that's possible or not but you know a bit like scaling the kettle builds up but either way I'm surprised that that one catches so much more so you can imagine what's in the boiler each time so I'm going to modify that vortex again and uh, see what it catches so what do I think of them well there's pros and cons to both. The Vortex, in theory, feels like um, the design of it should be better, where it accelerates stuff to the outside, but the magnetic strength is poor. Um, it's centralised, and so it does miss particles. You saw that it captures a lot more on the outside um, from those big magnets. So I'm going to add about, I'm going to wrap those all the way around the outside and also change the pole direction to make them stronger. Um, and don't forget that, um, like I said, magnetic field strength is um, inversely exponential. So the further you, weigh or you are away, the particles are away, and the smaller they are, it drops off considerably, like a factor of four or eight or something. Um, and when you look on the Vortex 300 on the return, that should capture pretty much everything, according to the manufacturer, of course. But the TF1 catches so much stuff coming through the, that's already been through the boiler you have to conclude that the TF1 is the better filter. I think it's got better magnets. I think whatever's inside it's probably a slightly better design, I'm not sure. Um, either way, it just seems to work a lot better, particularly at high pump speed. So I think in summary, 
the best filter is actually the TF1 even though the Vortex is definitely a lot easier to clean out, more functional. It has some flaws, it doesn't have that air bleed, which is just silly, and uh, it doesn't capture as much stuff, I don't care what they say. There's absolutely no way that captures as much stuff. And in terms of cleaning chemicals, the best cleaning chemical is definitely the X800 all round. Now, if you've got any questions or anything, stick a comment below.